Keith, uh, we're having a chat just on the day that we've announced your appointment as the scholarship head coach at Lauren. Congratulations, first of all. Um, how, how are you settling into life at Lauren? Uh, thank you very much, first of all, as well. Um, so far, so good. Uh, every, every day I've been up, the sun's been split in the skies. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure of mine to be up, um, being associated with this football club and being in and around some top men uh, and especially some young footballers um, looking to, I suppose, further their career in full-time football. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll talk about the role and, and uh, you know, just settling into it and, and what you hope to, to get from it and add to it in, in a wee minute or two. But many people will remember you in the, the Irish League, um, tearing up and down the touchline. Tell us a little bit about your, your playing career, first of all, if you would. Well, um, I suppose I started about 17 years of age and I had about a 20-year career in around at Portadown Football Club. Um, I had a really, really good time, um, came through the ranks and we played, I suppose, we were in the top three clubs, I suppose, in the country at the time. And um, we had a pretty consistent career in Furness. Um, so we won everything there was, the league, the Irish Cup, the League Cup. Uh, whenever we did get relegated, we got promotion back up. So I suppose I've been through that development phase of a young player coming through and being in a, in a uh, I suppose, a big first team. Yeah. Um, working under the legendary Ronnie McFall, he, he would have been your only manager, I suppose, at Portadown, is that right? But most of it, uh, he, I think it was about 19 years, and then there was a wee period where there was a few extra wee co our managers at that stage, but the majority of it was under Ronnie, and, you know, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, and moving from player to coach, how, how did that come about, and, and how did you kind of make the transition from the two? I think like every player, I suppose, whenever you, you suppose get that wee tad older or maybe even I had a few young children at the time and I think it's the next wee progression sometimes if you, if you love your football. Um, but I, I sort of seen myself getting involved and started quite young, I think about in around 26. And uh, I'd been done the C licence, went on done the B licence one and two and then obviously then the, the level one and two, or sorry, the, the A licence one and two. Um, so it was a period of about 10 years coaching there that sort of progressed through them ranks. Mm -hmm. And has that been a mixture of kind of underage and um, development or senior? How, how has that come about for you more recently? The majority of my coaching has been mostly development football, you know, from my underage. Um, started off with sort of like Porto Down 05s and then um, I worked from about, I think it was under 7s, right, to about under 16. And I had a wee year stint there at Porto Down under 20s. Uh, and even while I was doing that job, I was with the, the Northern Ireland via Swansea Academy and currently now still involved in youth football with playing for the Future Academy. Mm -hmm. um, so I do I do love that development football area. Um, it's a passion of mine to see young young players develop and get better and show the best version of them. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you you just really got started in, uh, as I say, the scholarship head coach role. So, you know, it's a very exciting time for the club that, that just kind of kicked off, I suppose, a year ago with the, the first year of the intake and, and there are some coming not far behind it. So w w what does the role involve? What, what would your kind of day-to-day -day work be with the club and, and with the, uh, the scholarship side of things? Well, pretty much I'll be sort of running um, the, the managing and sort of the planning of the sessions for the, the, two, the two scholars, year ones and year twos. Um, I'll be leading all coaching. Uh, at the same time, I'll be managing and coordinating the squads for the, the NIFL under 20s and NIFL under 18s and the, the, the National League 18s. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a busy day. I think today was the first day we were in there and um, it was it was a joy. There wasn't fully 48 people, but it's just just under. But uh, it was it was a joy to see them all in there. They didn't touch too much ball today. It was all testing, just getting their, their scores and seeing where they are fitness-wise. But uh, there'll be a bit of football tomorrow, so it's an absolute joy just to be involved. Mm -hmm. It's it's unreal to see the are the opportunity these lads have in a in a professional football club where the environment that's created by Larn and by all of the coaches that's supporting me uh, is unreal. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've talked about it at the club before, there's the there's football aspect of it and there's also the kind of the academic and, and the learning aspect of it as well. And I suppose, you know, you're there primarily to, to think about the football, but, but there's the whole person to look after, the whole young person, isn't there? And, the, you know, it's a busy yeah. time for them. That's true. So the likes, I, I'm, well, I know I'm not a school teacher, but I'm there to support them all and obviously make sure that the guys keep up their, their grades and keep to the, a good level of good standard. And everything to do there so uh, that, that's the most important part of me I'm, I'm a family man i've got young children education's massive 
uh, it's massive, massive for these young fellas. So it's it's important there that I'll be there to support them through it all. Yeah, uh, and I know you've only been in sort of maybe a few days and bits and pieces before that. But how have you found kind of the um, standard and the level and you know some of the, the players that you you've got to work with? Uh, again, I had a, a football pitch assessment and the, the standard was very very high. Um, they took on board everything I suppose that I asked of them. Um, I had a wee so it was general session one day just after that and. Again, I got to know the boys again. I've had a wee trip to Liverpool with them, with the, the first year scholars, and I've seen them play a few games. I didn't really get involved, but it was a, a joy to see them. Some some quality quality footballers with bright futures ahead of them. And mm -hmm. um, it was it was definitely I've inherited some quality players, quality young men. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a unique environment, I suppose, in, within Northern Ireland. I know that, that quite a few football clubs, maybe now, you know, have forged links with local um, techs or schools or things like that. But I suppose with Larn, you know, it's completely based uh, in Larn you know, through the football club, uh, goes hand in hand, and you know that that's quite a pretty unique setting for for this country, isn't it? But that's the unique thing about this particular program. It is all for Larn Football Club. You know, so you're training, you're training four or five days a week, and obviously you're playing for Larn at the end of it all. So yeah. we reap the rewards of all the hard work out on the pitch. Yeah, and I'm sure you know by now you've uh, you've had a chance to, to speak to like of Tiernan and Gary Haverin, and you know there's a particular way, isn't there, that that they want kind of all age groups and especially those who are maybe just on the cusp of trying to break through to the first team. You know they want them to play and uh, handle the ball and deal with themselves on and off the pitch as well. Yeah, pretty much. So the, the same the same message has been put out. As I've said before, to to under tens as it is to the under fifteens, and so on and so forth. So you know, it's it's it'll take time, obviously, with a lot of hard work and graft on the pitch. Uh, that that same message has been relayed through all the coaching, and you know, it, it's just every it's a buy-in clause from all coaches. Obviously, if you have you have to want to play that way, and you have to accept it. And I think it's it's nice. It's the only way to develop kids is get them on the ball, make them yeah. ask them to play, make mm -hmm. them feel comfortable, and. Um, that, that's the unique side of Larn again. Yeah. And I suppose that, yeah, and, and I suppose the likes of Maddie Lusty is kind of the, the poster boy so far, you know, in terms of somebody who's come in through this programme, uh, is very much involved in the first team, uh, European squad, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you somebody like that to point to and say, listen, you know, the first team is not that far away, if, you know, if you apply yourself and and uh, you get your opportunity. Absolutely true. Maddie's been um, one of, I think, about seven players that maybe had opportunities this year. So, not Larn aren't just this big football club. There is a pathway for young players at 16, 17 to get into the first team. So, that that, that proves it as well. You know, it's, it's uh, Maddie's obviously, the, the, as you said, the poster boy, but I think there's, there's some other players that hopefully will be knocking on the door for more of a consistent basis in that first team or in and around it more often. So, that's, that's the it's, that's good for some of them boys as well. So there's an opportunity for the new the new recruits coming in here. Um, you know, they can see that there is that pathway. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to say, you know, that we've, we've seen kind of the year one intake, you know, they they become year two now, and then there are players that will come in behind that as well. So probably the longer you're in that environment, the, the better opportunity you have as well, if, you know, if you're a promising young player. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they, they have to, they have to move by into every part of it. Uh, it's a great program and the opportunities that they have to be a footballer in a full-time environment is unreal. Uh, I wish it was happening whenever I was younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just finally, we're obviously sort of in the midst of this uh, European run. Do, do you notice kind of things like that rubbing off on the younger players? Is there a bit of a buzz and excitement, you know, around them and around that group as well? I think so. The, the whole, the whole, there's a whole buzz about the whole place. The place is unreal at the minute. I've said it from day one when I went up for my, my first assessment and I walked in and I couldn't believe it. I, the place, I, I explain it like it's a crest of a wave and the waves just keep getting bigger and I think that's the way it's going to continue. It is an immense feeling to be involved with it and them young fellas are bound to, to see that and feel that. Bound to be. The, I've had a few a few games and the atmosphere of the games is unreal. So it's just going to get bigger and bigger, I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Look, exciting times ahead and it's good, good to have you on board, Keith. So uh, it's good to hear a bit more about the, the role tonight as well. So thank you very much. Listen, thank you very much for your time. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you.